Hey, and welcome back to online class with Ajibola. Last time we discussed about motion, definition of motion, types of motion, and examples of motion. Today we are looking at laws of motion. What do we mean when we talk about laws of motion? Laws are standard statements regarding a certain thing. Oh, if this is this, then that will be that. So let's see. There are basically three laws of motion. Law 1 states, Newton's first law of motion states that every object will, co will continue to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. I take that again. Every object will continue to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. Now look at the board you are looking at. This board, it is in its state of rest. It is not moving. So Newton's first law of motion is saying that this board will continue to be there forever unless something takes it away from there. You know last time we said uh, uh, motion is a change in position of an object. So unless something takes this board away from here, it will continue to be here. And because it is in its state of rest. But if a force is uh, uh, being applied to it, which is an external force because there is no internal force that is going to make it, you know, burst from inside or anything. So unless an external force is acting upon it, it will continue to be. That is what Newton's first law of motion is saying. The second part is talking about a uh, uh, uniform motion. That is, if something is moving, if nothing stops it, then it continues forever. Oh, you say, what is he saying? Well, what about a moving vehicle? Uh, it, yes, a, a moving vehicle will continue to move, but if the fuel finishes, that is a, a force. That is a factor that is stopping it. But if the fuel continues, that means, if the fuel still remains, that means, if you don't stop it, if you don't apply the brake, if you don't stop, you don't apply any force on it, that means it continues to move forever. So that's what that law is saying. Let's take the law again. Newton's first law of motion states that every object, maybe a vehicle, a box, a chair, or the world we're looking at, every object will continue to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion unless that object is acted upon by an external force. Now let's move to the second law. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum, take note of that momentum, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and it takes place in the direction of the force. I take that again. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and this change takes place in the direction of the force. Now, there are some certain terms we have to explain there. The first is rate. The next is change of momentum. While the next is direct proportionality, proportionality and the next is talking about the direction of an applied force. If they ask you, what is a force? A force is a quantity that change the position of an object. You know, we say motion is the change that occurs in position. So that means it's a force that causes motion. If there's no force, no motion. Take note of that. So we say when a force is applied to an object, whether the object is moving, was moving before the uh, force was applied, or the object was at rest. If a chair is not moving, uh, is at rest, it's not in motion, if you push it, you have applied a force. Then it keeps moving for as long as the force has been applied. And the direction of the force is the direction of the motion. That's what this law is saying. I repeat that aspect. This law is stating that if you applied a force on an object, if the object was in motion before and you apply another force to add to the motion, that means it will change it with, in the speed with which it is moving. But if the object is not moving before, so long as 
the force you are applying can overcome the static friction between the object and the, 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 the stationary part, then definitely the object will continue to move by that force. If the force is withdrawn, the object starts moving. So it's now saying the rate at which the momentum of a body will change is directly proportional to the applied force to the body. You know, we're talking about two kinds of body now, body at rest and body in motion. So the rate at which the momentum, what, what we talk about momentum? Momentum is energy. And momentum is just it's a form of energy which is mass times velocity. Talking about velocity, how fast an object is in motion. So an object that is at rest, the momentum is zero because it's not moving. But an object that is moving, that is in motion, the momentum can never be zero. The momentum will be the mass of that object times the velocity with which it is moving. So we now say an object that is moving slowly, take for, ex for instance, uh, uh, somebody is a cyclist moving on a bicycle, just moving slowly, and if a motorbike hits that person at a greater speed, then the, mo the, the, the movement of the person on the bi bicycle will become faster, though it's going to be disastrous, but it's go in terms of physics, we talk about the energy that it receives. So that means for an object to change in its motion, or for an object to, to, to change in the direction of motion, or a, fo a force must be applied. And when that force is applied, it means that if the force is great, the change in momentum will be great and the motion changes will also be great. So, but if the force is just a tiny force, insignificant, it might not really even affect it. But what that proportionality is talking about is that the greater the force, the greater the change. Now, let's now bring it to the mathematical uh, interpretation. We talk about momentum. Say so we talk about some things. Momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity, which is mv. Change in momentum. Change in momentum is delta mv over t. That is the rate of change in momentum. Delta mv. What's the meaning of delta? Delta is just a change. That is mv minus mu over t. Where did u come from? U is always an initial velocity, while v is always final velocity. Now, what do we mean when we say initia? Initia is the ground velocity, ground state velocity, while the final is the change. You know, when something changes, it must change from something to another thing. So, here we're talking about change in momentum. It must have an initial velocity, and the velocity must change to another velocity, which is the final velocity. That's why we have our V and U. So, MV is the final momentum, while MU is the initial momentum. So it is regarded that initial velocity is always smaller than the final velocity. That's why we have mv before the mu. So mv minus mu over t is our rate of change in momentum. And when we're talking about that, we need to consider something. Change in velocity alone is v minus u over t. When you talk about the velocity is changing, that means final velocity minus initial velocity all over t. But that final velocity minus initial velocity over t has been defined as acceleration. So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Rate at which velocity changes, that is what? Acceleration. If an object is moving slowly, if it accelerates, it begins to move uh, faster than that. It begins to move very fast. So what we are trying to say here is that acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. Now. Combining it, we have our m, you know, when you factorize from here, you have uh, m is common to the two sides. So you take m out, then v and u in a bracket. So m into v minus u over t. But remember, we say our v minus u over t is acceleration. So we can say this is f, this m a, m and acceleration, because this is acceleration. So mass and acceleration. But let's come back to the law. The law says that force that is applied is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. Now, let's see, mv minus mu over t, then v minus u over t is our acceleration, then we have f is proportional to ma. So where our f will be kma, because we have changed this proportional sign to equality sign, the constant must come in. But where the constant is assumed to be one, then we say f equals to ma. Where the constant is assumed to be 1, we say f equals to 
MA. F equals MA. So if they ask you to prove F equals MA, that is force equals to mass times uh, acceleration, you should be able to prove it from the Newton's second law of motion. And the third law states that, third law of Newton, as if Newton states that, Newton's third law of motion states that to every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. To every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. What are we trying to talk about here? To every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. If you have a bucket, a bowl of water, the bowl of water is filled up and you take a ball uh, or a stone, you drop a stone inside the water as it is filled up. What happens? The water is going to spill over. So as the water spills over, that means the thrust, the thrust of the stone or the object into the bowl has, made, has, has been able to displace equal volume of water out. Okay, another example is that when you are in, in a vehicle, a moving vehicle, as vehicles try, try to speed up and move forward, you try you tend to relax back. That is a change in a, it said to every action, there is what? An equal but opposite reaction. The vehicle move forward, you relax back. But as the, as the driver matches the brake, what happens? The vehicle moves back, then you jack forward. So that is uh, Newton's third law of motion in place for you. So uh, we have been able to look at the law one. What does law one say? Newton's first law of motion states that to every action there is an equal but opposite. I mean, Newton's third law of motion states to every action there is an equal but opposite reaction. Why first law states that every object will continue to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. And the second one is talking about proportionalism of uh, momentum. It said the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force. You know, if force is not applied, the momentum of that body will not change. It will continue to move at the same speed. And if it's not moving, it will remain there. That's what law one is saying. But when a force is not applied in law two, then the, the rate of change of that object, of the motion of that object, is going to be dependent on the force applied. And the change takes place in the direction of force. If the force is applied to push it towards the east, then it goes towards the east. So, and from there, we're able to find our F equals to MA and law 3, you've seen that. Very quickly, we're going to be moving to equations of motion.